solstice is coming. Summer solstice in the northern hemisphere, winter solstice in the southern hemisphere. It's a great time to prepare for your celebrations wherever they may be. A good place to start your planning is where you live. And set aside at least a day and a night for celebrating solstice. And you might want to celebrate solstice for multiple days and nights. I am here in a forest in southwestern Wisconsin, USA. I have some frankincense and I am blessing this sacred circle with this ancient incense that's been used by people across the world and across different traditions different faith traditions, different magical traditions. Frankincense cleanses away what's not needed and it helps boost the spirit, brings about inspiration, healing, well-being, great aid for meditation. So I'd invite you to get at least one herb connected with solstice and or the sacred sun. And frankincense is good because it's widely available. I have a Josh stick here, though a wonderful way to burn it is to actually have some self-igniting charcoal blocks and get some gum resin and put it atop there, there and you will find it fumigating. So that can be a wonderful way of burning it. But I like these frankincense jaw sticks because they're easily portable. You can have them outside or inside. So do a blessing of your home as you prepare for your solstice celebrations. You may want to burn some incense as I am doing. And one way of doing this is to walk around the space or to turn in a circle around the place and do a smudge or a cleansing with the incense. Another way to do preparations is to get some kind of rhythm instrument that you enjoy. It can be an actual rhythm instrument. This is a sistrum, and I've had this for many years. It's uh, a more folk version of Sistrum. If you look in some of the um, archaeological sites that look at the Sistrum through time, there's a lot of fancier ones that um, were used in ancient Egypt. This one comes from Africa. I got it many years ago at a museum gift shop and have carried it with me. It's my tambourine on the stick. So why get a rhythm instrument? Because it's a great way to exude joy and you can also use a rhythm instrument to clear space and prepare space for ritual. If you don't have a rhythm instrument, you can clap hands or shake some keys, metal keys together. So there's a lot of different ways to do rhythms. Um, rhythm is a way of shifting from a thinking state of being to a feeling state of being. And at solstice time, it's good to have thoughts, but it's also good to just be holistically tuning into the cycle of the seasons. Indeed, solstice is from the Latin, sol meaning sun, stis meaning stand still. And as you go out and look over these next few days at the horizon, either at dawn or if you're more of a night owl at sunset, we're headed towards sunset here. Look 
where the sun goes down on the horizon from wherever you may be. And you will notice if you do that over the course of several days and nights that the sun will be moving, setting in a different place, arising in a different place until you get to the four days around solstice time. Then it appears that it comes up and sets in the morning and in the evening at the same location on the horizon. Ancient people tracked the movement of the sun and also paid attention to alignments with the sun. And I think that is a wonderful way to prepare for solstice. Start becoming more sun observant. Now you don't wanna look at the sun directly with your eyes because that can cause eye damage, but there's ways that you can look to the side and um, be able to track it that way. So pay attention to the rising and the setting of the sun over these next few days and nights and be aware of the sun's movement along the horizon. Another way to prepare for solstice is to think about some object you might want to bless or some object you might want to create. This is my archive of spirit bags. What is a spirit bag but a small square of cloth with some herbs and a sacred stone in it that's been crafted for healing, well-being, and you'll notice that there are many spirit bags on here. Indeed, there are 39 spirit bags on here. Why? I started having spirit bag making and blessing as part of my own summer solstice celebrations when I helped birth Pagan Spirit Gathering back in 1980. Indeed, we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of Pagan Spirit Gathering. And typically what we have done every year is had a big gathering prior to the gathering and have made many, many hundreds and hundreds of spirit bags of a particular material and particular herbal ingredients and everything every year. And that's why you have so many different colors here. And um, basically everybody taking part in Pagan Spirit Gathering gets a spirit bag. Well, this year, are we doing Pagan Spirit Gathering? Not in person, but virtually. How are we doing spirit bags? We haven't had a group community volunteer day, work day since February. So the plan is that I'm going to guide people in crafting a spirit bag. Yes, indeed, I invite you to tune in to the Pagan Spirit Gathering virtual 2020 celebration. And I will be doing a workshop on Friday, June 19th at 11 a.m. That is Central Daylight Time or noon if you're on the East Coast, 10 a.m. if you're Mountain Time, 9 a.m. if you're Pacific. And I invite all of you who would like to learn how to make a spirit bag to get some of your favorite herbs that you would like, dried herbs preferably, that you can put into the spirit bag, get a square cloth and either a twist eye or some yarn or some string to tie your spirit bag with. And I will go over instructions as part of my workshop, which is part of our virtual PSG. So this year, everybody's going to be making their own kind of spirit bag that chooses to do so. So how do you find out about this spirit bag workshop? Well, if you aren't already part of the Pagan Spirit Gathering Facebook page, I'd invite you to go there tonight or tomorrow and ask to join. We actually start our summer solstice celebration, our virtual Pagan Spirit Gathering this Sunday. That's June 14th. 
Yes, it's flag day, and we'll be waving a lot of different flags that day um, in our individual homes. This is Pride Month, so that's one of my flags, as well as a flag for the USA, which is my home nation. So go sign up for the page, and then stay tuned for updates. What's another way to prepare for summer solstice coming up? I invite you to do some research into your Ong heritage. Do you know what place, what culture, what spirituality or religion or philosophy that ancestors have come from? If so, I invite you to do some searching and find out how they celebrated summer solstice. Or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, how they celebrated winter solstice in preparation for your solstice celebration. I am an all-American hybrid. I have many strands of ethnicity that have woven together into the tapestry of my heritage. I learned many years ago that I am part Swedish. And what is a major holiday for people who are Swedish? It is summer solstice. It's called midsummer. It's not in the middle of the summer, but it is in the midst of the warmer season in Scandinavian areas. So it's gotten the name midsummer. Um, people call summer solstice a variety of different names. Litha, L-I-T-H-A, solstice, summer solstice, midsummer. You probably know your Shakespeare, a midsummer night's dream. Well, that midsummer with the fairy folk into the woods, that's all part of the lore of summer solstice. And another name for summer solstice is St. John's Day. And it typically is June 23rd. However, as with midsummer and summer solstice across cultures and belief traditions, people celebrate it more than one day and one night. And so in many places in Europe, summer solstice is actually called St. John's. And who is St. John? It's St. John the Baptist, cousin of Jesus Christ who is linked with the other solstice, the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. I think this is a creative way of being able to weave in Christian traditions and develop Christian lore and teachings over the foundation of the pagan ways that preceded it. How do we know that humankind's been celebrating solstice for a long time? Part of that has to do with the sacred sites that go back millennia. Um, Stonehenge is probably the most known of the solstice-aligned sites. People know about the summer solstice there at Stonehenge because in recent years, English Heritage has made it possible for grand gatherings to happen there. Well, this year there's a pandemic and how do we celebrate solstice at Stonehenge? Online! Yes, indeed, there will be live streaming of summer solstice at Stonehenge. Not the mass groups that have been there in past years, but it is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to be able to connect with that sacred site. But there are other sacred sites as well. And as you prepare, for celebrating solstice, I invite you to not only study lore of places and cultures you have connections with, but to also look around the country where you live. Are there any solstice places, ancient solstice places or contemporary solstice places? And indeed, I think what's exciting is that more solstice places are starting to emerge. Indeed, I am at one. I am on land that is adjacent to Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve. And indeed, looking off to where the sun is, that is Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve. 
my husband and I live on property that we own that's right next to Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve. We usually aren't celebrating solstice, solstice day and solstice night and the days before and after on our land because we're off celebrating a pagan spirit gathering. But this year we're getting to celebrate over at Circle Sanctuary land and at our own place. And we also are celebrating in cyberspace. So another thing that you can do to prepare for solstice is find out who's doing online solstice celebrations. Circle Sanctuary is doing one, but I am sure we will not be the only people celebrating solstice. Indeed, in recent years, solstice has become a thing for people. Well, it's a way to tune into nature. Well, that's excellent. A number of special workings that are global workings have happened every year over the last few decades. Some workings for planetary healing, some workings for peace, some workings for celebrating our interconnectedness with all of nature. I will be doing a summer solstice morning ritual on Saturday, June 20th at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. That is 11 a.m. on the East Coast. It is 9 a.m. in Mountain Time and 8 a.m. out in Pacific, um, our Pacific coast of the USA. And it is at 3 p.m. Universal Time. So wherever you might be in the world, I invite you to tune in to our morning solstice celebration. Later that day, we are having another solstice ritual. We will be having that as our main ritual for our virtual pagan spirit gathering. And David Dorshu is a longtime member of the pagan spirit gathering community and a well-known person in theater and the arts. He is putting together a spectacular ritual. I got to talk with him today. And the Friday night before Solstice Day, there will be a bonfire ceremony happening. Um, also part of the virtual Pagan Spirit Gathering. And on Sunday the 21st, we will be having another Solstice celebration as we close out our gathering at 1 p.m. Central in the afternoon. Now we have the whole schedule for virtual Pagan Spirit Gathering online at the Circle Sanctuary website, www.circlesanctuary.org. So you can go there, you can find out not only about our virtual Pagan Spirit Gathering that's being live streamed on Facebook Live at the Pagan Spirit Gathering Community group page, but we have a whole series of podcasts that are happening on Circle Sanctuary's internet radio network, CSNP. So every day during Pagan Spirit Gathering, there also will be a podcast. And we're also having concerts and all sorts of workshops. We are having meditations. We are having breakout rooms where people can meet and greet. We are going to kindle a fire. Our community welcome begins at 8 p.m. Central Time on Sunday night, June 14th, followed by the kindling of our solstice fire. Indeed, having some kind of flame and if your circumstances are such, you can't have a bonfire or even a lit candle, well, there are battery operated candles. So get some kind of light to represent the solstice sun and realize as you're preparing for a solstice and as you celebrate solstice, however many days and nights you might be doing it, you are not only part of a large community, diverse community of people in your own country, but around the world that are celebrating solstice. And I also invite you as you prepare to celebrate solstice to recognize that solstice has been celebrated on planet Earth for thousands of years and that you are keeping alive a practice that links humans to nature. Not only here on planet Earth, the beautiful greening 
of the land is all part of summer solstice up in these parts, but it connects us with that larger universe of which we are part. Yes, indeed, there is this amazing sun dimension. And this year, solstice time happens around the time of the new moon, a time for new beginnings. So before um, concluding, I'll share with you some additional ways of preparing for solstice. Consider getting some kind of beverage that you can pour on the land, you can toast the sun, you can use that, it can it can be a mead or a wine if you do the alcohol thing, or it can be a juice, or it can be water or herbal tea. I'll leave that up to you and your preferences. But the idea of pouring some libations to the earth, toasting the divine in whatever way or ways, by whatever name or names according to your own tradition, it's a way of celebrating. Yes, and another thing to do is consider having a feast. Yes, you can have a solstice feast on solstice day or on one of the days leading up to it or right after it. And when you think about it, solstice is kind of um, linked in with another holiday that people in the USA celebrate called Independence Day. Is it any accident that the founders, many of whom were part of Scottish Rite Masonry, um, who observed both St. John's Day and Christmas Day, both solstices as part of their practice, is there any um, accident that going into solstice that our country was starting to be born. The Declaration of Independence got passed on July 2nd and finally went through all of its hoops on July 4th. But the committee that was formed to draft the Declaration of Independence happened right as we were going into solstice time. Uh, you know, the anniversary of that date's a few days ago. So I think it's really a bit of solstice magic to think about the founding of the USA and the freedom connected with that. And for that reason, part of my own solstice celebrations every year has been really taking a look at the need to have equality, liberty, and justice for all, not only in the US, but around the planet. And so part of how I prepare to celebrate solstice is to hold in my mind things that I'm grateful for and things that I hope for and want to take action to manifest with others. And clearly we are in a time of turbulence in many parts of the planet, not only because of the pandemic, but there's a lot of different things going on. Not only are people in social isolation to try to ward off the COVID-19, but as part of that change in rhythm, some of the things that really need to be fixed in societies are becoming more visible. Solstice in summer and solstice in winter are two really powerful, what I call threshold times. And part of the reason people have for many years done special prayers and rituals for the greater good at these points is they have been times where people have gathered. In the cycle of the sun, the yearly cycle of the sun, the sun reaches the point of longest day and shortest night at summer solstice. And linked in with summer solstice is the oak. I'm here in an oak grove. There are a few other trees here as well, but mostly the trees around me are oak. And in fact, at winter solstice, many people will kindle a Yule log of oak. And at summer solstice, we also like to kindle fires with lots of oak. But regardless of where you live, whether you're 
inside and needing to stay there, or you're in a city or a suburb, small town or rural area, know that you can celebrate solstice in a variety of different ways. What are some other ways to celebrate solstice and to prepare for them? Is to figure out how you're going to greet people and then do some greeting over social media. Happy solstice! I often will use that because it does double duty. Since I have people I network with, not only in the Northern Hemisphere, but the Southern Hemisphere. And it is an expression that works for all. Or you can be nuanced about it and you can go, Happy Letha for those in the Northern Hemisphere and Happy Yule for those in the Southern Hemisphere. Or Happy Midsummer and Happy Midwinter or happy St. John's Day and happy um, Christ Day or Christmas. But of course, Christmas is fixed in December pretty much wherever you are on the planet. So think about a greeting you might want to have. Think about some items you might want to have to join you in your solstice celebrations and preparations. One of my favorite ways of celebrating solstice is to use an oak wand and to honor the sacred sun. And whether you have a wand and if that's your thing or not, no, we have arms <laughs> and they can be wands as well. But as you reach your arms out and if you have a wand connecting with the sacred sun, honor it celebrate it, and if it feels right to do so, according to your own beliefs and traditions, draw that power not only into yourself for blessing, but into the planet. Indeed, a working that we do every year as part of my morning summer solstice ritual is not only celebrate the sacred sun, but to call on healing and well-being for planet Earth to call on the divine as God and goddess, as great spirit by many names, and to find ways to converge the diversity that's part of humankind for harmony and community. So happy solstice and happy preparations for solstice. Stay tuned to my Selena Fox updates page for some more updates about solstice celebrations. And be sure to visit the Pagan Spirit Gathering community page. And if you feel called to do so and to join some or all of our solstice observances for eight days and nights, I invite you to come and join us there. Many blessings. Thank you all for watching. And if you haven't already, let me know where you're watching from. I invite you to do that as I do a closing chant. Sacred solstice, sacred sun, sacred solstice, sacred sun, sacred solstice, sacred sun, sacred solstice, blessings come. Be blessed. Be blessed with love, with joy, with gratitude that helps us appreciate what we do have. Be blessed with peace. Be blessed with hope. Be blessed with enthusiasm, optimism, collaboration, knowing that we can connect face to face here in cyberspace and we can connect in inner space with our imagination and our spiritual practices. Thank you all for joining in my Prepare for Solstice tonight. And I can tell by seeing comments coming through, my phone is on a tripod, that 
this site works. So this is good. It is a place on our land that we call Sunset Point. And I am glad that I have sufficient cell phone coverage here to do live streaming by Facebook. So thank you all for joining in. If you're interested in getting more information about celebrating solstice, including some chants and other things, visit um, YouTube. I'll be putting some chants up there on my Selena Fox channel in the next few days. And we already have a variety of podcasts that have summer solstice themes. So you can go and check not only upcoming um, podcasts, but ones that have already happened. You can listen at any time and you can either listen at the link that is up at the Circle Sanctuary website. We have a CSNP page that has a whole list of different podcasts that we have done and that are coming up. Or we are on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and a variety of other podcasting services. Happy Solstice! And may we find good ways not only to celebrate in our homes and in the larger universe of which we are part, but find good ways of being able to work together, not only to have a happier, healthier world for humans, but for that greater circle of nature of which we are all part. Many blessings and solstice magic is afoot. Thank you.